Good morning, everyone. I'll be talking about frequency distribution table using Megastat. In my first video about Megastat, we talk about measures of central tendency, then measures of variation, and then the quartiles, where we calculated all of those through Megastat. Now we go into the construction of frequency distribution table where we use Megastat. So, for example, you are given the data on heights uh, in centimeters. So, first, you are going to encode the data. So, we have data in here from 167, 167, 181, 156. Uh, this data are in terms of centimeters. Then, going to the last one, 164. So if you look at uh, the Microsoft Excel, before column A, you can find the numbering one up to, the numbering is one up to number, number 61. And our total number of data is only 60 because uh, the first column is actually the heading. So don't forget that every time we write data, we encode data in the Microsoft Excel, the first row is intended for the column heading. So in this case, the column heading is height in terms of centimeters. So, so situate that the data are actually in terms of uh, numbers, no other characters, because if there are other characters, then that would not be read. All that should be read are actually numbers without any other characters, where the characters are not actually numbers. So I can actually align the data. I like that the data are actually at the center. So I saved the one, located the one already at the center of the column. That's the normal way I like how to present the data in the different columns of Microsoft Excel. So I assume that all of you have downloaded Megastat. So in my case, to locate Megastat, I'm going to click on data. So when I click on data towards the upper right-hand corner, I can find Megastat. This one, I can find Megastat. So I click on Megastat. And last time, we talk about uh, descriptive statistics. So we click on descriptive statistics. So in here, we look at the frequency distribution. So I'm going to transfer the cursor, pointing to frequency distribution. Under frequency distribution in Megastat, there are actually two. We have the quantitative frequency distribution and the qualitative frequency distribution. Remember that we have data that are qualitative and we can actually convert a frequency distribution table for that. So in this video, we focus into frequency distribution table coming from quantitative data. So I click on quantitative frequency distribution. So when I click on the quantitative frequency distribution, you can see this dialog box. Frequency distribution for quantitative data. You can find the input range. And then the input range, you are going to highlight all of this, starting from the column heading. So highlight all to the last data. The last data is 164 under row 61. So after that, it's automatically placed in the input range. Then you have some choices, equal intervals. Then we have custom intervals and then options. So in this case, we're going to have the equal intervals. In the examples about frequency distribution, you notice that the the intervals are actually the same all throughout the classes. So, so remember that we have the upper limit, the lower limit, then we go down to the next uh, class, to the next class up to the last uh, classes. And then we determine the highest and then the lowest, then we determine the range. Then we determine the number of uh, classes and then we determine also the class weight. So 
Those are the manual process. So now we go into the automatic generation of the frequency distribution table through Megastat. So if we are going to have equal intervals, so we click that one, equal intervals. And then uh, we can actually have also some uh, graphs. Uh, so we can click on the polygons. We can click also on the OGIM. Remember that in the manual computation, we look at into histogram, we look at into polygon, we look at into OGIM, and all of those were generated actually in uh, um, in uh, manual process. So, so I click already histogram, polygon, OGIB, and then we have the equal interval. So I click on OK. <clears throat> so there you are. So after clicking, you can find now the frequency distribution table. So we have height in centimeters. 145, then less than 150. In the manual example, in the first video about frequency distribution, it's actually lower limit dash, then upper limit. Then the next one, we have lower limit, then dash, then upper limit. But what is used in Megastat is actually less than. So 145, less than 150. Then 150, then less than 155. So when we say less than 150, that means 150 is not included. Then we have 150 less than 155, then 155 less than 160, then up to 180 less than 185. So the, the midpoint is uh, being provided already. The class width is provided. The frequency is generated automatically. The percent is given also automatically. The cumulative frequency and the cumulative percent uh, is also provided in there. So that's very nice. So without much more effort uh, is about the megastat. You can actually calculate all of those needed in a frequency distribution table. The third use part in there is the encoding of uh, the data, no? the encoding of the data. And then after that, you can just do some manipulations in the different operations of Megastat. The histogram is provided. The frequency polygon is also provided. And then the OGIM is also provided. So there you are. So we look at into the different outputs, no? about frequency distribution table coming from uh, a quantitative uh, data. So I'm going to repeat. Uh, so these are the data being encoded in here. So being encoded. See to it that the encoding is correct. Uh, you encode the numbers uh, correctly. If you don't actually do that, so there would be errors in the frequency distribution table. Why? Because the data encoded are done incorrectly also. So situate that uh, you have the proper labeling of the column. So in this case, the total is 60. And that corresponds to row number 61. And why row 61? Because our first row is actually for the column heading. So 61 minus 1, so we have 60. So the total number of data that we have there is 60. And then you click on data. When you click on data, you can find the megastat in here. That's in my gadget, depending on your gadget on where you can find the megastat. So I click, I click on megastat, then put the cursor under frequency distribution table. And then there are two, we have quantitative and then the qualitative. So for now we look at into the quantitative frequency distribution table. So here, so we have frequency distribution table from quantitative data. So when I click that, so it's already in there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to reset. So we have starting from the column heading. You have to start from the column heading up to the last data, the last data. And then uh, decide of equal intervals and then check on histogram, polygon, and then all give so that you can actually, the, the visuals of the data that you have constructed in a frequency distribution table. 
So we have this and then click on OK. Sorry. OK. So there you are. You see the frequency distribution table. You see the histogram. You see the frequency polygon. And you see the OGIM where the X and Y axes are properly labeled. And then, so you can have here the upper lower limit and then upper limit. The only difference is that in the manual computation, now we have the dash, like for example, 145 dash 150. But in here, we look at it to less than 150, less than 155, up to less than 185. So when you say less than, meaning that number there after the symbol is not included. So 145 less than 150. So 150 is not included in the first class, but 150 is already in the second class. 150 less than 155. So 155 is not included in the second class, but the second class is included in the third one. 155 less than 160, meaning 160 is not included in there because of that uh, symbol less than 160. So midpoint is calculated. You know how to calculate the midpoint, then the width, then the frequency, this, uh, fre frequency, and then the percent, and then the cumulative frequency, the frequency, uh, and then the percent, uh, which are cumulative in uh, nature. So that's all for now. We look up into frequency distribution table coming from uh, quantitative data. So for my next video, it's all about frequency distribution coming from qualitative data. So thank you very much and uh, happy day, everyone.